I have 15 clever spring cleaning hacks for you. I'm gonna motivate you to clean all the things that you've been putting off around your house all year long. Also, this video is part of a $100 giveaway so that you could use it to spruce up your home, buy some groceries, maybe cleaning supplies, whatever your heart desires. Details will be shared with you at the end of this video. Also, nothing in this video is sponsored and anything I talk about here today will be linked in the description box below and I'll also pin it in the comment section. Are you ready to have some fun? We're starting here with the toaster. Come on in here, look at my toaster. It's real nasty. You may be saying to yourself, Andrea Jean, you run a cleaning channel. How could you possibly let your toaster look like that? It looks like a furry animal is growing inside. Like who dumped an entire bag of potato chips and Doritos and Lay's in there? Well, I have the perfect solution for you. But before we do that, turn around your toaster. Most toasters have a little slot here, but look at in here. Oh gosh, it's so bad. They're just like stuck in there. Take these out and then we're gonna dump these in the garbage can. Not sure if you have one of these babies at home, but if you do not, I highly recommend it. They're also fantastic in your shower. Cleaning made easy, my friend. Whoop, 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 look at that. Clean perfection. Now we're just gonna dry them. Now the next logical thing to do would be to empty this over a garbage can, so that's what we're gonna do. However, it's not gonna get all the crumbs out, but let's just at least attempt. Spank your toaster a little bit. Give it a little spanking. Now look inside. So now let's make it look real good. You know what? Take a drink. All this cleaning we haven't even started has got me. Okay, lay a towel down for this. Trust me, you're gonna wanna do this. It's just gonna save you so much time. I have really great whitening routine. Look at this, like this, very inexpensive. Honestly, I think it was like six bucks, maybe 10 bucks on Amazon. So take your brush, it has the perfect size handle to get down in here, watch this. Shake those crummies loose, get them in the middle. Now we're cooking. This side's a little trickier. Let's go into this side for a minute. All right. Woo, look at that, that's a good start right in there. Look at that, satisfying. Okay, next I'm gonna go in with this one. It's a little bit skinnier. Well, you clearly know we make a lot of toasted related things in this household. Of all these brushes, I have to say this little flat one with the sort of felt on the bottom is my favorite. It's really getting in there. Now, this is such a tedious job. I, ac I actually hate doing this because it is so tedious, but it's important. You don't wanna have a house fire. See those little burnt on pieces in there? You need a good tool to like scrape those out. So that's why this one is wonderful. Look at that, it's like a little dick or like you could pick somebody's nose with it. Just kidding, <laughs> okay. We're gonna have fun, aren't we? Yes, we are. Okay, this guy, like look at right in there. See if I can get that. There, oh, it was like popping a zit. Awful, but satisfying. Oh, there we go, got that one. Come on, yeah. Crumbs are no match for this woman or you anymore. Oh, wait, give it a little shake a rooney Be careful, a little spanking again. And then you go in again, see if you can get any more, okay. I was noticing a rattling inside the toaster and I thought I made it this far, I might as well finish it. So I did take the screws off the bottom here. Now, word of caution, you need to be very careful when you do this because it is attached to the various electronics inside. But look what I found in the little lips and grooves. Pop-tart, I'm pretty sure that's a pop-tart in there. So you may be able to take off the bottom of your toaster, but just be very careful when you do it. Survey says, look at all that. It's like a loaf of bread died in my toaster. Now you're just gonna take this and then you're gonna to throw it in your trash or your garbage disposal. Now our finishing touch, I just like to take a warm wash rag and wipe the outside of our little gem here. I don't like to use any chemicals when it comes to cleaning the outside of this because it's likely to come in contact with food and then just dry everything up. Now, for all of my type A personalities, come on in here. There's a little groove that you can see all these little crumbs down in there. Can you see that? Now, these bristles on this one are probably the toughest, so we're gonna use this to get in there. Little spot right there. That's so good. Okay, maybe this is very satisfying. Yahoo! I told you we're doing surgery on our toaster. There's like this burnt on stuff that's just not coming up with my rag. Oh, look at This toaster is gonna look like brand new. Let me try this one. This one's a little bit slanted. Better, 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 better. That is good enough for me. Now, don't forget to slide your trays back in or you're gonna have a situation all over your countertop. Now, if you don't have one of these in your cleaning arsenal, I highly recommend, again, post it on Instagram stories when it's on sale, but this is just gonna make your job so much easier. Look at all this. Just plug her back in 
and she's ready until next spring. Just kidding, let's hope I don't wait that long. And I just checked, this is currently 23% off on Amazon, so if you've been contemplating it, I would grab it. Two tools to clean those screens, you can certainly grab a lint roller. I'm gonna link the number one best-selling lint rollers on Amazon, these work just fine. However, it doesn't have a long handle, it's hard to get in the little nooks and crannies around your screen, so this right here is awesome. You can see there's an arrow. You take this little handle, slide it on through here, it's got a little hook on it, snap it into place, and now I wanna make our job easier, so we're gonna get this a little bit wet. Here we are, we can grab this lint roller. Be very careful when you're cleaning your screens. This is okay, I don't love this. It's, it's all right for lampshades. Actually, I really love it for lampshades. Can you hear those birds outside? <gasps> Makes me so happy. It's very satisfying to touch. And then you can easily just wash this off when you need to. You obviously wanna do this with a clean brush head, but this works fantastic on couches and furniture for pet hair because of this nice material. You may be saying to yourself, Andrew Jean, why do you have a laundry basket next to your refreezer? Refreezer? <laughs> your freezer and your refrigerator. Well, my friend, let me show you something. Let me know if you've done this in a while. You've gone through your freezer to see what's in there and cleaned it out. You're gonna take everything out. Can you guess what we're gonna grab now? Dun da da! Remember I told you I use this for everything? I literally use it for like everything. Look at all these crumbs in here. See all that? Mm-hmm. Moving into our next easy, simple step. Now going with your favorite multi-purpose cleaner. I love this one right here. Come on in nice and close, mean green. It is fantastic for your kitchen. Countertops, greasy stoves, range hoods, floors, sinks, refrigerators, and well, freezers. And then I just like to take a big kitchen towel like this that's dry. Spray it down and wipe away. Oh, that makes me happy. All right, and then you're just gonna put everything back. We were able to toss a few things, reorganize, and look at, look at how pretty that is. I love it. Yes. Now, remember that laundry basket? Oh yeah, you're gonna need it for this next one. I have been dying to do this one, but maybe you won't need the laundry basket for this one, but. If you have entry rugs with a lot of shoes, now might be a time to go through the shoes and decide like these winter boots can get packed away. We don't need them hanging out here, taking up space, or these ones. Uh, my husband has one, two, five pairs of shoes down here. Six pairs of shoes down here. Some of these should probably go up into his closet. Now I'm gonna cross my fingers that it doesn't snow here in Minnesota again in April. So I have a whole bin here for all kinds of winter stuff. I'm gonna put the boots in the bottom. I like to put scarves, mittens, and hats in a separate bin. By golly, they all fit. Now would be an excellent time to get a laundry basket, a bag of some sort for all of your donation items or to be donated. So for example, these are no longer gonna fit my youngest son. This is the part that I've been waiting for. And if you haven't noticed, there's a QR code on screen where you can scan everything that I talk about in this video. Do you need any of these things? No, you don't absolutely need them. You just makes your job easier and more fun. And if anything, this video is meant to motivate you and give you ideas of things to tackle around your house this time of year. excited while cleaning my rugs we experienced a little technical difficulty but I want to show you what I was able to suck up from just this rug now I did do a couple of passes on it I needed to it had been a few months look at how satisfying this is look at how dirty these rugs are I can't believe we've been tracking this in and out of my house so now's the opportunity to clean those rugs oh my word look at all that dirt ceiling fans an often neglected job I only have one in my house However, I don't get to it as often as I should. This is awesome, it does a lot of things. I'll show you a little bit later, but right now, look at this right here. You can take this off, which is really cool, and these are washable. Do not wash them in a fabric softener. Oh, and look at this, it just stores nicely. Boom, boom, boom. Swiffer duster for the fan is also excellent, but I just love this one because it gets the top of the fan blade really well. There are very few tools that get the top of that fan blade. Yes, and the sides. Never get on a ladder again to clean those fan blades. That is dangerous, my friend. I know many of you say, go get on a ladder, get a pillowcase, but why? why why would you risk your health from climbing on a ladder and getting a pillowcase? And I think this actually does a much better job. Look at how fast that I'm doing this. Like, and I'm going a little bit slower than I normally would. Done!
Can you see all that dust in there? Oh, that's satisfying. It's like the dust eating cookie monster. It's like my little buddy. I'm just hanging out there. You can hang it up if you want to. Now you may be saying, Andrew Jean, you didn't clean your whole fan. Well, I got you covered. Just gonna twist this off right here. This is like magic. Moving on to this magic stick. That's not what it's called. This is actually called the blade made. So look at this bends. Like you could put this any darn direction that you want. So if you want to get up in here, watch. All right, there we go. And now how about way up top here? Oh, this is going to be really dusty. Nice microfiber to pick up all of that lint dust so that when you turn your fan on in the springtime, if you do that, it's not flying all over your house, making your dusting job more challenging. I love that. Now, normally I went clean in a sweater, but I wanted this to be spring inspired theme. And this is really like the only thing pink in my closet other than a pink t-shirt, but then you would definitely see the pit stains in that one because this girl's been working up a sweat here. Okay, this pink ball matches my shirt. What do you think it's for? Have you seen such a thing? Let me show you. Da da da! Ladies and maybe gents, I bet you have some handbags with a bunch of items in them. Like maybe you switch out your purses and then you don't take all the the items out of that purse. So for example, I have two rocks in here from my daughter. We got some mints, some cosmetics. So now is your opportunity to go through all your purses, clean them out, give them a fresh start. And then this is fun. This collects all the lint in your bag because you know how oftentimes it's difficult. It just collects all kinds of stuff. So you throw that in there and then you just, it's so small. Look at how tiny this is. And while it's, you're walking around, you're doing your thing, it's rolling around. It's picking up all the lint. It's picking up all the dust. It's like cleaning made easy and then you take it out after I don't know maybe next spring when you decide to clean your purses out again I'm just kidding you just squeeze this part right here watch Boop. and then inside here it's like this jelly material and then you can just rinse this off and then pop it back in here put it in your gym bag put it in I don't know something like this this like cleans your purse for you. Vents and baseboards. I got you covered, my friend. Look at this. Nice long handle. No need to bend down when you clean your baseboards. Look at this. Does the work for you. Again, this is machine washable. You can even get the top of the baseboard. You see? There we go. That is looking so good. And if you really want to get crazy, you can do your walls. Look at this. Way up high. Okay. You know what else? These vents. These vents get so nasty. And again, you can bend this any which way that you want. Oh, that's fun. Look at this one. Oh, yes. Ooh, this one over here. I love a good Swiffer duster, but man, this thing with the extended arm, you can wash it so you don't have to buy replacement heads over and over again. And then I'm like, hmm, now I feel like, I feel like going to town on the rest of my baseboards. When's the last time you washed your shower curtains? Yes, your fabric ones and the liners. You can throw all of this in your washing machine. I like to wash it on a warm setting and then I will dry them. This clear plastic one, I don't dry. I just hang it over to my deck to dry. And then here's a little trick when it comes to washing this stuff because it can house a lot of smells. You know, you have moisture, it's damp, and then you turn off the light and then it's dark. This is like a breeding ground for smells and bacteria. Again, not sponsored, just sharing with you what I love. I love this clean boost fabric rinse. Downy also sells a very similar version. It's called rinse and refresh, but you can see right here, this cleans deep, breaks down residues and freshens fabrics. I do not use vinegar in my washing machine because I actually think that it stinks and doesn't actually freshen your fabrics, but this stuff works. Main ingredient, in fact, is it the main ingredient? Cleanse it. Yes, it is the main ingredient. It's the number one ingredient, citric acid. So now's the time and motivation to wash all of your shower curtains. In our number nine spot, we're talking about cleaning your bedding and your pillows. If you have not done this for some time, now is your prompt and your cue. Now, when it comes to washing pillows, you always want to make sure that you read the care instructions on the tag. What I will say about this is that you should never use bleach when it comes to your pillows. And then I just tend to wash mine on a medium heat and dry them on a medium heat as well. And when you're washing your pillows, you want to make sure you only wash two at a time and with nothing else. Because if you put something else in that washing machine, your pillows are going to get so super clumped up and misshapen and they're not gonna look good anymore. Now I tend to wash my comforters once a month, all of my kids and our comforter, I've just trained myself to do that. But if you have not, have no fear, here's your motivation to get the job done. 
Now, sometimes our comforters are a bit larger for our washing machines. In that situation, you wanna just go to your local laundromat so that you can have a larger drum option when it comes to cleaning these babies. And you may be asking yourself, Andrew Jean, how often do you wash your pillows? I try to wash my pillows every three months or so. I do change out the pillowcases every single Friday, but again, the comforters just once a month. Follow me. Oh, and if you haven't noticed, it is the next day, and I did find something spring inspired in my closet after all. You know, cleaning and spring cleaning takes some time, so be patient with yourself. Now, I'm gonna just run this on a quick wash, and that's 26 minutes. You certainly can do a normal wash, but since I do this every month, I feel like that's just good enough. A normal wash is usually around 56 minutes. A couple things I like to use, this is completely optional. All you really need is a little laundry detergent, but because I'm just a little bit extra, if you've been here a hot minute, you know that. I like to use a clean booth so that I can really get in those fabric fibers. I do not use fabric softener on my comforters. And then I do like to use a laundry sanitizer. I just have this powder stuff that I want to use up, but I do like the Lysol version as well. Again, completely optional when it comes to this. And warm heat. Now I will say this, the comforter will not dry completely in the dryer. So what I end up having to do is just kind of hang it over places in my house. And after a few hours, it's all dry. Let me know in that comments box, when is the last time you vacuumed your furniture? I know I'm guilty of this. It's just not the first thing that comes to mind on a Sunday. Like, hey, let's just vacuum all the furniture. However, this is something that's very crucial. Even if you don't eat on your couches because all the dead skin cells and hair and things that we can't even see are all up in here, especially because many of us spend so much of our time on the couches and lounging and hanging at the end of the evening. So get yourself a great vacuum in order to do that if you already have one on hand. If not, I love this one and I'll show you exactly why. It's also great for your steps. This thing easily pops off. Look at that. I know, I know, it's genius. She purrs like a kitten. Now many couches you can take off the cushions to wash them. However, in my experience, taking off all the couch cushions, washing them, and then trying to get them back on these cushions is really a pain in the butt. So I just like to use my little Bissell Green machine, which I've shown so many times in this video. Now, once you vacuum your couches and assuming you've already cleaned them, there's something I do like to use. A little antibacterial fabric spray. Not only will this help eliminate any odors that may be lingering in your couches from pets and body odors, and whatever else is on those couches, but also it's gonna kill any sort of bacteria. So hopefully everyone stays just a little bit healthier. It just has a nice, pleasant, fresh scent to it. Let's clean and sanitize those remotes and electronics. Here's what I like to do. Oftentimes, a little micro brush such as this is gonna be so helpful to get inside these little keys. Maybe you drop some popcorn down there. Maybe, I don't know, a potato chip. Maybe a little something. It's so small, it works perfectly at picking up all that lint and dust that's in here. There's a part two to this. So once you've cleaned out all the gunk that you're seeing in between these keys, you certainly can use this brush pack right here. I love this. This is a very soft bristled brush. You can use that to get in there and just kind of get out any of that preliminary crumbs and debris that likes to float in there. I feel like I'm painting, you like painting your brushes. Then the next thing I like to use is some sort of antibacterial wipe, something that's specifically designed for killing the bacteria. Now you don't want them to be super moist because you don't want a lot of moisture, if any, on these electronics, but just give them a good wipe down, getting in all these nooks and crannies. I'm like seeing some, I don't know, some Thing that's spilled on there that's a little bit wet. I certainly should do this more frequently, but now is the cue to get the job done if you haven't done that in a while. Clean them all up just like that. Let them dry. You want the product to sit on there long enough so that it can kill the bacteria. And then when it comes to cleaning your computer or an iPad, I know many of you like to watch iPad, here's what I like to do. I have this nice case on here which certainly protects it that I can wipe down really, really easily. This case was like $25. It's gorgeous. It comes in multiple colors, but then it also came with this keypad right here. 
Wipe that down. Be very, very careful, especially when it comes to your computers and your electronics such as this. You certainly could take a little rubbing alcohol and a microfiber towel, but I feel better when I use just a little Lysol wipe such as this. Now I'm not doing the screen as you can see right here when it comes to wiping that down. Again, you're going to go in with your little micro brush. This is perfect for getting in between those keys. Now I do have a cover on here. So look at this, this is an easy way to make you not have to clean as often. Like I can just pull it out if something gets dropped in those keys. But if you don't have something like this, this is where this brush comes in handy or something like this to easily get those keys. Now, how do you clean your screen? Let me show you my favorite product. You've seen these before. Have you watched any of my cleaning videos? It's the screen daddy. I love it because it's just so stinking convenient. But do you see these fingerprints? Let's see if the camera can pick it up. I don't know, it's from opening and closing. Just, I don't know, for whatever reason, finger fingerprints tend to accumulate on your screen. You can also stick this to the back of your cell phone to clean off fingerprints on your cell phone. I don't like to use any sort of liquids when it comes to the screen, just a nice product to get the job done. And you can do this with your cell phone screen. Yes. It's that time. It's time to clean your coffee maker or your Keurig. I'm going to get some gloves here just so, well, there's going to be a lot of little parts in here. I want to protect my manicure. Grab your filter. You're going to take this out. If you have not changed this in quite some time, you're just going to get yourself some water. Pop it on out there. Yes, there we go. And then we're going to put our new one in. Let this soak. I think it's 15 minutes if I remember correctly. Oh, it just says five minutes rinse for 60 seconds. So we're gonna let that soak for about five minutes. I was getting a little too eager. This is drip tray. Well, I actually just put it in my dishwasher. Now, it does say hand wash only on the back, so do this with caution, but I will tell you this. I've had this coffee maker for over nine years, and we've been putting this thing in the dishwasher since we've got it, and it's intact, but again, do with caution, I'm just sharing with you what I have done. We're gonna take these parts, we're gonna set them in our sink for a hot minute, and this guy too, and this guy. Now, the outside. This thing is real nasty up in there. We got a lot of different things happening. We have this guy. Oh yeah, we're gonna take this, put that in our sink for a minute. You're gonna want a couple towels for this one. I'm going in with my mean green. We're just gonna give it a nice bath around the outside in here, and then I like to take this one, wipe everything down. Now, there's a lot of grooves and nooks and crannies if you can see down in here. Spray that, and then I take my pack of brushes, pick your poison here. I think I'm gonna try going in with this one. This is a fun one. Oh, that's looking so much better. White and bright, not yellow. And if you haven't descaled your coffee maker or Keurig in quite some time, that was a great opportunity to do that. Ooh, down under here. This bottom tray also comes out. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. can you see down in here? Look at all these coffee grounds inside, right in there. Oh, oh yeah. Now for that particular part, I'm just gonna take a warm washcloth. I'm gonna see what I can get with this right here. All right, I'm gonna need one of my brushes. This one's probably gonna be our best bet. Woo! A lot built up in there. Oh, back in there. There's a little crack. See this? We're gonna go into this flat one. Watch this. Woo-wee! They're coming out, all those coffee grounds. This is the best gift you could give yourself is this little brush kit right here and any loved one. They'd be like, what the heck is this? What are you trying to tell me? And then they're gonna come across a situation where they need a little brush and they're gonna be so thankful for you. Now, I'm just gonna get a little spray bottle with some warm water and spray that down. Something green up here, what is that? All right, our spray bottle with just some water. This is like for real, for real, cleaning your coffee maker. Your other towel. Don't forget back in here. Looking so much better. Oh, she's sparkling. She's happy, she's purring. What is on the top of there? Oh my word. Some built up something or another. Just gonna grab some water, a little elbow grease. Oh, there we go, it's coming up. Let's try this one. There we go. 
All right. What do you do with all the parts? Give them a good spray. Then I like to take my filter, rinse that off so it's ready to go. A baby bottle brush, this is amazing. This is the part that gets real bad. Looking so much better. This guy. <laughs> And last but not least, once you've rinsed everything out, then it's time to dry it all up. She's so happy, she's looking all shiny, bright, and new again, and hopefully she'll run for another nine years. That would be wild. An 18, 20 year old Keurig coffee maker. Let me know in the comments box below, how long have you had yours? Makeup, cosmetics, beauty products, it's time to go through them to see if they are expired and maybe you should no longer be using them. How can you tell if they're expired? Well, maybe they have kind of a funky smell or they're not the consistency that they should be, but here's a clever way to find out. If you've ever looked on your makeup, I'm going to show you a couple of examples just to give you an idea. You're going to find, you just kind of have to look around for it. Let's see, we're looking for an M or on this one, it just tells you. I mean, they made the simple for me, August of 2025. Now, how about this? What if it doesn't say that on there? You're going to see a little jar that has an open container. This tells you 12 months after opening it that it will expire essentially, or just be caution. Here's another one right here. There's a little jar down here on the back of this one. Hopefully the camera is picking that up, that it's six months after you open this product that it's going to expire. This one right here is approximately 12 months after you use it that it will expire. And then what about this body spray? This is 24 months. Wow, two years after opening this, it's still good. So now's the time to go through all of those beauty products and make some more room in your bathroom, makeup bag, wherever you like to keep those gems. Garbage disposal, it's a gross, disgusting job, but somebody's gotta do it. So I'm just gonna take some of this if you can see around the rim right here, it's all dark and gray and brown. I just like to stick some of that in there. This has a nice, lovely smell to it. And then this little brush right here is actually designed to get under the rim of your toilet seat, but I like to use it in different places. It comes four in a pack, so this one was not used on my toilet, if you're wondering. Look at that, it just gets around there so nicely. <laughs> all right, let's check our job. Oh, look at so much better. Look at that. Oh. Yay. Okay, now, that's not the whole job. Here's the part that's probably gonna be really nasty. Okay, there's two things, this brush and this brush. This is what's gonna get deep down inside your garbage disposal, and then you need to get under the flap. So let me just show you. It's been maybe two, three months since I've done this. So yeah, you certainly get a toothbrush and do this, but I like this brush, because again, it's like lift and layered. Oh my gosh, don't splatter yourself. Look at that, that is nasty. This is not set up, this is how it's actually looking, okay? Ugh, so gross, look at all that. Is the camera picking that up? Look at this. It's like, that's so bad, so, so bad. Like, I'm just gonna put a little of this down here for good measure on my brush, and we're just gonna go to town. This is part two of the process, so hang tight, my friend. No, this does not unscrew, but I can easily just take it off. Oh, so bad. The toothbrush doesn't have this curved handle, so that's why it doesn't work as easily. All right, I think we got that. I'm gonna take this long brush, specifically designed for your garbage disposal, and you can stick that down there, see it's perfectly. Just see if there's anything down there that needs to get loosened up. Ugh, I can see stuff coming up. See that? Ugh, look at that. Like, what is that, a noodle? Stuff we don't wanna know. We rarely use our garbage disposal to actually ground up food, but for whatever reason, so much stuff gets down there. Okay, the rim is clean, the rubber is clean, down in there somewhat clean from what we can tell. Now we really wanna make things nice and fresh. You can certainly use some sort of DIY concoction like lemon and baking soda, that works great, but I prefer just to grab a package of this uh, fresh, stick it on in there. You're gonna run this a little warm water just to drizzle, okay? It just, this just works. That's why I love it so much, it just works. Okay, stick that on in there. Let your water run for a little bit. Now we're gonna turn on our garbage disposal. I see, I love when it does this. This right here, this foam, makes me very happy. You're gonna keep this on for about 15 to 30 seconds. That just makes me so happy. Ah. Your garbage disposal is thanking you now. 
your dishwasher. We're getting it all up in here. You're gonna spray the front down to make her nice and happy if you have stainless steel. We're just going with a little Sheila, my favorite 75 pack of microfiber towels. Let's just shine her up really quick before we dig into the guts of this dishwasher. Ooh, she's happy on the outside, but is she happy on the inside? We will see. Now, it's been, I don't know, two, three months since I've done this one as well. Open up your dishwasher, check the arm, see if there's anything caked to it, see if any of these holes are plugged. You can see these tiny little holes down in here. And then you filter, check this. I always get nervous whenever I do this. Yep, why, why, why we rinse our dishes before we put them in here. It looks like boogers and slime and things you do not want in contact with your food. So this is what we're gonna do. I'm just gonna go in with the Dawn Power Wash here. You can use anything that you want. I haven't used this brush on it before, but I'm gonna use it. See, works great. Look at that, burnt. <laughs> this brush is like the best invention ever. I love soaps and suds. Let's rinse. I think it is looking pretty. That's darn near perfection right there. Here's the next thing that we're gonna do. You can put baking soda in here and run this. I think that works just fine, but I do like to use something specifically designed for your dishwasher. This one is great. You wanna do this about every three months or so. That's when I really tend to see the buildup on here. We're just gonna take this part off. I need some help getting the top sticker off with my gloves on. You're not gonna take this cap off. Leave this cap on. I repeat, leave this cap on. Now you certainly can wipe out the inside of your dishwasher, although this is gonna do a really good job of doing everything. Cleaning made easy is the best part, right? You're busy. You don't want to spend hours and hours and hours on end cleaning. So you're just going to stick it in there. la ti da my friend. And you are going to run this on a normal wash. Oh, put your filter back. <laughs> I got a little excited. Yeah, cleaning will do that to you. Don't mind my dishwasher as she purrs and hums. So how can you win $100? Just three simple steps, my friend. And remember, this is part one of a two-part video, so you could potentially win up to $200 cash. Number one, give this video a thumbs up. Number two, leave a comment below that says, winner, winner, chicken dinner. And number three, in the description box below, and I will also pin it in the comment section, enter your email address. That is it, my friend. And then the next couple of weeks, I will email you because I'll have your email because you entered it and let you know that you won. Once I've contacted you, I will post it on the YouTube community tab and on Instagram stories at Andrew Jean Co. who the winner is. Now, something you want to pay attention to is this. If someone looking like me contacts you on YouTube telling you that you won, that is a scam. Someone tells you to use Telegram, that is a scam. The only way I will contact the winner is via email. Your scammers are not going to have your email address because, well, they just aren't going to have your email address. <laughs> All right, my friend. I hope you had as much fun as I did today. And when part two of this video is live, click it on screen now. Otherwise, click this one in order to keep the fun going when it comes to all things cleaning and home hacks. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I will see you, my friend, in the next one.